I am sending um, the, the ID to Johanny, so hopefully she is fine and she could come at any minute. But okay. we could start. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sure. Um, all right. Uh, then with that, um, I just want to let everyone know again that we are recording. Um, so uh, a couple of things, just first, if people, um, when you're not speaking, to please mute your microphones. And uh, also, if you're having any kind of um, video connection issues, feel free to turn your video off. We would love it if you could stick around and we could see you. But if for whatever reason you have a bad connection, feel free to turn off at least the video so that um, that might help. Um, when you introduce yourself this morning, uh, or this evening, I'm sorry, um, please use your pronouns. So I am Stephanie Ciccarello, the coordinator, sustainability coordinator for the town of Amherst, and I go by she and her. Um, I would like to start with, um, we actually have two acknowledgements this evening now. Um, the first is a Native American uh, land acknowledgement. And then we also have one that was drafted by Lauren Mills, one of our community leaders, um, that uh, is a statement of the contribution of African Americans. And I will read both. So let's begin with the statement of the indigenous heritage of the land. We humbly acknowledge that we stand on Nonatuck land, acknowledging also our neighbor, neighboring indigenous nations, the Nipmuc and the Wampanoag to the east, the Mohegan and Pequot to the south, the Mohican to the west, and the Abenaki to the north. And I would like to read our statement of contribution of African Americans by our community leader, Lauren Mills. Amherst recognizes the generations of African Americans that have contributed to the development of agriculture and historical academic preservation from the past to the present. We also recognize the rich spiritual culture, artistic contribution, and pursuits of justice that have enriched the communities in which African Americans have lived, worked, persevered, and achieved. And with that, I will turn it over to Gazi Kaya. Hey, I'm Gazi Kaya. Um, my pronouns are they, them, theirs. And I think, um, Stephanie, I don't think you mentioned just that if for any reason our meeting is interrupted, um, that we ask for people to just immediately leave the meeting. Um, and we'll get in touch by email about how to proceed from there if that were to happen. Um, so I was just going to um, briefly go over the agreements that we've been using um, for our meetings thus far. And um, I first just wanted to mention that, you know, these are, these are hopes that we can keep these in mind, but they really have to do with thinking about um, where our personal values are and how we want to um, use our time together, not just in this meeting, but um, hopefully this will give you the opportunity to think about how you interact in any meeting or any experience that you have in your life. Um, whether we are focusing on um, being yeah, meeting our goals or being outwardly successful or connecting with the people around us and valuing those people. Um, so the first one is to put people and relationships first, um, to feel free to take care of yourself at any point by taking a break or um, being with or checking in with children that need caring for or anyone else who needs your attention, stepping away for yourself to get a drink or a snack or anything that you need. Um, just please do that um, whenever you need. Um, the second one is to, uh, oh, I'm gonna pause there and let Rosanna do the translation. The other thing is that we have Rosanna here um, to interpret. Um, and I'm realizing now, Johanny's not on yet, so we don't need to do that. Never mind. 
Um, it would be kind of nice to have it for the recording since we have Rosanna. So I think actually go ahead, Rosanna. So the first one is to put relationships first. If you could just unmute yourself. It's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm Rosana Salazar. Um, well, I am resident, Amherst resident and also UMass student and also working for the Collaborative for Educational Services. Um, I am working with Kaylin in Healthy Hampshire. <laughs> Um, working with um, community engagement uh, close to the community, I'm very happy to, to do this. I'm very happy to be here uh, also. Thanks, Rosana. So I was wondering if you could just translate um, uh, for the video, so unmute yourself, so if someone watching this later can understand what we're talking about. So if you could um, translate for me that part that I said about how we want to have, um, keep in mind that we're putting people and relationships first during this meeting. Uh, do you say that uh, nosotros eh, estamos poniendo primero a las personas eh, y las relaciones eh, oh no, interpersonales? Eh, primero. Awesome. And the second one is that we want to keep in mind that we're pausing for translation and um, to avoid using jargon or technical terms. And that will ask you to raise your hand before speaking so that we can keep a slow and thoughtful pace. Y Rosana, ¿puedes traducir eso? Um, ya, yeah. um, yo estoy distraída. No, <laughs> okay. no. Estoy. Um, es que eh, vamos a... Eh, por, no favor, por favor, eh, tienen que poner su... Eh, tienen que hacer pausas para que puedan eh, hacer las traducciones. Eh, sí. Y, si se me pasa algo, por favor, hazlo. Yeah. Eh, y si eh, quieres eh, hablar, eh, levanta su mano. Está bien. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is that um, we ask that if you're a person who tends to talk a lot, that you consider sharing less. And if you're a person who tends to be more quiet, um, that we make room for those people by allowing for silences in between. Yeah. ¿Puedes traducirlo eso? Porque hay cosas que no te entendí. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, si, si usted es una persona quien um, habla mucho, um, vamos a pensar en que um, vamos a crear espacio para los, los, las personas que no hablan mucho y vamos a quedar en silencio si eso es una oportunidad para alguien um, a participar. And the last one is that we're going to do our um, second to last one, is that we're going to do our best to um, remember that sometimes um, very personal things can come up and we want to uh, keep things as private as possible and not push people to um, give more information or to prove what they're talking about. So, um, Por favor, recuerda que um, a veces uh, las participantes van a um, compartir algo muy personal y no queremos, um, uh, queremos guardar uh, la, la privacidad. La privacidad, gracias, de todos. And the last one is that um, we want to continually remind ourselves that our ideas about what are right and wrong are most likely just a reflection of your culture and um, may differ from others in the room. So um, please be open to learning um, by asking questions of others rather than assuming that your perspective is um, what's good for everyone. 
So, nada, nada, nada es eh, erróneo. Eh, eh, todas eh, las personas eh, van a hablar según su, su cultura y, y es, eh, está perfecto hacerlo así. Gracias, Rosana. Thanks, Gizikaya. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Lauren. I use she, her pronouns. And you haven't heard from me much in these meetings so far because I've been taking notes and capturing all of the great ideas that have been shared uh, throughout these meetings. Eh, eh, hola a todos, mi nombre es eh, Lauren um, y yo estoy, um, los nombres son ella, ellas y pues estoy tomando notas eh, y agradeceré que me eh, puedan hacer pau pausas. Gracias, Susana. Um, so, this time we decided to switch things up and Jim is kindly taking notes today. I'll be helping to facilitate along with Gazi Kaya. Um, voy a, um, a eh, además de tomar las notas, voy a, a ser facilitadora con Gassit. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, I, so I work with Jim and um, I currently live in Portland, Maine, but I lived for two years in Northampton and went to UMass. And I'm very grateful to be working with this community and this group of people. So thank you for having me. Um, actualmente está viviendo en Portland, pero antes eh, ya estuvo viviendo en Northampton por dos años y ya también ha ido a UMass. Y um, eh, está muy contenta de poder contribuir con, con, con esta, este equipo, este grupo. So um, we wanted to start off our conversation today with a reflection on the idea of climate resilience. Um, so I'm going to share my screen um, just to have some visuals to support this section. Uh, voy a compartir la pantalla eh, para que puedan ver los audiovisuales. Um. All right, can everyone see? Thumbs up if yes. Okay. And hi, Marita. And just want to say hi to Marita, who just arrived. Hola, Marita. Um, so as we've been talking about climate change with this group, what keeps coming up is that folks' lives are very unstable right now in terms of um, things like housing, food, transportation, and job security. Um, eh, en, en ese momento, bueno, eh, estamos, la vida es muy inestable y sobre todo uh, hablando de transportation, transportación, clima y comida, comunidad, y, uh, um, em, em, empleos, y ¿Sí? inestabilidad también en los empleos. Sí. Um, and that all of these things are affected by climate change. Y todo esto está siendo afectado por el, el cambio climático. So we've also been talking about quality of life, how difficult it is for some members of our community to live in Amherst and how wonderful it is for others. También estamos hablando de la calidad de, de vida eh, y, y cuán difícil se puede ser vivir en este momento en, en Amherst. Um, and how some of this is connected to our systems of governance. Y esto está conectado también con el sistema de gobierno. And we've been talking about the connections between the drivers of climate change, like burning fossil fuels and, and quality of life, the connection between those two. Y es, podemos hablar sobre la conexión que hay entre eh, uh, what you say, sorry. Um, 
things like burning fossil fuels, los combustibles fósiles. Yeah, los combustibles fósiles, eh, los, um, eh, los que manejan el, el gobierno. Uh, sí, pero la, la conexión entre la com contaminación climática y la calidad de vida. Yeah. Um, and so these ideas reflect these two priorities that we're holding of Estas ideas reflejan dos prioridades. Of climate mitigation and climate resilience. Eh, climate medication, medicación. No, uh, mitigation, um, mitigación. Um, oh, mitigation, yeah. Mm. Uh, mitigación del clima. Sí. Y... Um, Capacidad de recuperación. Yeah, that, yeah, the resilience en la capacidad de recuperación. Yeah. De este, del cambio climático. Gracias. And so we wanted to start off by asking the group a question around how, how it's felt going between these two priorities of climate mitigation and climate resilience and what has come up for you as, as we've thought about these two priorities. So, yeah, Gassi, ¿tú puedes, ¿puedes hacer esto? Sí. So, vamos a preguntar uh, a todos a pensar en um, cómo se ha sentido entre estas dos prioridades y qué ha surgido de ellas. So, um, ¿Qué, ¿Qué son las ideas para ustedes cuando están pensando en la realidad que tenemos, la situación que tenemos que mejoro, mejorar la, um, el cambio del clima, pero también tenemos que mejor, mejorar nuestras vidas uh, diariamente um, ahora? So I'm just going to give folks a minute to think on that question and then we'll maybe ask a couple of folks to share their thoughts. So, unos breves minutos para reflexionar y, y después podemos conversar acerca de esto. And I'll stop sharing my screen for a moment. All right, I see your hand is up. Did you want to jump in? Sure, I'll jump in. I've got a slow connection, so I'm gonna try to not use video unless I need it. Um, no problem. For me, the difference between mitigation and resilience in the actions I take doesn't exist. There is no difference, by, by which I mean, I can't mitigate the climate by myself. I can by myself try to uh, be more resilient uh, in my house and perhaps my immediate community. But what I do do is try to pick those actions. Great, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bernard, I wanna just stop you there so that we can do the interpretation. Um, but please hold that thought. I know you're on a great train. Okay, para Bernard, no hay una diferencia de la mitigación de, ni de la... Um, Resilience, ¿cómo era? Para, um, para ah, resiliencia. Ah, bien puede interpretarse el mismo. Claro. <laughs> es mejor de yo. So, no creo. Maybe I can say it this way. I try to do things that build resilience that if copied on a community or worldwide scale would also contribute to mitigation. Ashwin, would you mind giving a crack at that? I'm not sure how to say that. Sure thing. 
Thank lo que you. trato de hacer es hacer cosas en mi vida propia, en mi vida personal, que si fueran replicados a escala a nivel mundial, sería una gran ayuda para la mitigación climática, del cambio climático. Wonderful. Bernard, did you have more to add or does that sum it up? That's the kernel. Good enough. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, I want to ask maybe one more person to share their thoughts on, on this question. Don't be shy. I can say um, something very close to our swing uh, that um, uh, we as an individuals, we, we uh, can contribute to the resilience or mitiga and mitigation of the climate. Um, always we have something that we could do in, in this town, in this world, uh, to, um, to make a change. Um, uh, uh, could we, we could feel that is uh, only a small change, but if everyone do this small change, that will be really a very uh, uh, important change in the world. Um, uh, so it's to have, uh, to take conscien consciousness about uh, what to do and what important it could be for, for us uh, and for all the people around us. Yeah. Um, so, uh, como eh, a nivel individual, podemos hacer cambios, eh, pequeños cambios que, o pueden parecer pequeños cambios, pero que en la esfera eh, mundial, eh, um, eh, si cada uno de nosotros empieza a hacer estos cambios individuales, eh, pues eh, se van a convertir realmente en grandes cambios. Entonces, eh, lo importante es elegir qué es lo que yo puedo hacer o qué es lo que podemos hacer juntos para que realmente este cambio eh, se pueda dar. Y a nivel de, de, del town, eh, cómo es que podemos contribuir para para esto, ¿no? para que se dé. Awesome. Gracias, Rosana. I'm going to share my screen again and just continue on with this conversation for a moment. Um, so one of the ideas that this plan is meant to address is, is climate resilience or bouncing back from stressors like floods, storms, power failures, and even pandemics. Oh, Rosana, um, no podemos entender. So, una de las, de las ideas de la resiliencia eh, del cambio es, eh, ¿cómo hacemos este rebote? Sí. ¿Cómo hacemos este rebote eh, y, y ¿Y qué podemos, um, la otra parte? Is, um, from shocks and stressors, like storms and, and pandemics. Ya, yeah, toda, todas las, eh, todos los estresores que, que, eh, que aparecen en nuestras vidas, ¿no? Como la pandemia, como eh, eh, las, los, las tormentas o todos los... los eh, efectos eh, naturales que, que se puedan dar también. Mm -hmm. um, but what we've heard over the course of our meetings is that bouncing back to the way things have been is really not enough. Eh, el, el, el rebotar esto, el rebote de esto no es suficiente. ¿Cómo lo explico mm, yeah. por este rebote? Um, so we've been acknowledging as a group that bouncing back only makes sense if you start off from a stable place. 
and much of our community is living without that stability. La mayoría de la comunidad está viviendo con, con esta, um, está tratando de, de vivir eh, o de adquirir habilidades para poder vivir en estas circunstancias. Esa es la, la idea, Gassi. Um, so we've been recognizing that this also means that much of our community is not able to fully engage with climate action. So la, eh, la mayoría de la comunidad no es, no, no se está em, em, enrolando o aquí. En, no está en estas sesiones de, de, de acción climática. En esos momentos. Um, so, instead of this idea of bouncing back to the way things have been, I wanted to offer a different definition of climate resilience as one of bouncing forward toward better conditions, toward stability, toward better outcomes. Um, uh, esta no la sé explicar bien. Gassi, ¿tú puedes explicarlo mejor? Yeah, so instead of going back to a place where we currently are, where people's lives aren't very stable, maybe we can try to move a little bit towards a better situation for more people. Uh, a lot of times in climate action, people talk about bouncing back to what they have at the beginning. But if we're not very stable to begin with, then we don't want to go back to that place. So we want to try to make things a little bit better than they were. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, you can do it in Spanish. Yes, I can try it. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Sí, básicamente lo que dice es que el, el, concepto, el concepto de resiliencia muchas veces se refiere a rebotar pues hacia atrás, hacia una, un estado que anter, anteriormente era pues estable. Pero el tema es que en la realidad el pasado tampoco no era tan estable. Entonces mejor que pensamos en la resiliencia en cuanto al tema de rebotar hacia adelante y no rebotar hacia atrás. No, porque okay. no era tan estable y queremos avanzar, rebotar desde la disrupción, los estresores, todo eso hacia un futuro, hacia un futuro que realmente, realmente sea más estable, con condiciones mejores y con resultados más deseables. Thanks, Ashwin. Gracias. Um, so, this can look like many different things, but it really requires that we are able to um, share the risks and opportunities associated with climate change more equitably. Yeah, pu pueden ser muchas cosas diferentes, eh, pero hay cosas que pueden ser más, um, eh, yo me, me estoy olvidando de todo lo que me están diciendo. <laughs> okay. um, Rosana, these are really like abstract concepts and it's difficult to understand in one sí. language, let alone in two. So you're doing incredible and it's the end uh, of the day. Yeah, Arwin, could you do, do ¿puedes hacer esto? Yeah, for sure. Um, Gracias. Este, uh, could you just quickly say that again, Lauren? I actually was... Yeah, I'm, sorry. No, no, I'm in it now. <laughs> All right, thanks, Ashwin. Um, just saying that um, the idea of, of bouncing forward really requires that we um, can share the risks and opportunities associated with climate change more equitably. Ah, okay. Para, um, para pensar en el tema de rebotar hacia adelante, eso requiere que compartimos los riesgos y los beneficios de todos los cambios que estamos, estamos uh, contemplando para que sea más equitativo la distribución de los resultados. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to give a couple of examples of what this could mean. Quería um, ejemplos de cómo sería eso, qué, qué podría significar. 
So for instance, it could look like collaborating with landlords and property managers to create tree planting programs in the apartment complexes. Por ejemplo, podría referirse a la colaboración con los propietarios, uh, dueños de propiedades y administradores de propiedades para crear programas de plantación de árboles y en los complejos de los apartamentos. Or it could look like creating incentives for landlords and property managers who create community gardening opportunities for renters. O también podría incluir crear incentivos para los propietarios y administradores de propiedades que desarrollen oportunidades de jardinería, jardinería comunitaria para los inquilinos. Inquilinos. Um, and I know this group has lots of other great ideas about what bouncing forward could look like, and that's going to be part of our discussion tonight. Y sa se sabe que todos los, que los participantes tienen muchas ideas sobre qué significa o qué debería significar uh, rebotar hacia adelante, y uh, estamos emocionados para escuchar todas esas perspectivas esta noche. I'm going to pass it over to our co-chairs, Ashwin and Steve, to um, kick us off on a review of some of the key ideas and action items that we've talked about so far in this group so that we can um, build off of those and launch into our main conversation. Va a pasar la voz a los co-coordinadores co del task force del comité, los cuales somos yo, Ashwin y Steve, para a guiarnos en un repaso, una revisita sobre los conceptos más claves, las sugerencias más centrales que han surgido o que ha salido de los antecedentes de esta reunión. I'll say that. Oh, wait, I guess. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, are you, are you there? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you want to do this? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy, I can give it a crack, or do you want to try to take it away? I'm, I'm, I'm open. Let me try to wing it here a bit and just okay. introduce, I think, the background for these major, these key ideas and major actions. Okay, Steve va a comenzar y yo voy a interpretar un poco lo que dice. These are ideas that we think we have heard in our previous meetings, and we want to go over them tonight and get feedback from the community on these ideas. Estos son las ideas que queremos, creemos que hemos visto en las reuniones anteriores y queremos darles un repaso uh, con ustedes para solicitar sus aportes um, para volver a pensar en ellos y quizás uh, este, modificar y editarlos. So we would like to just go over these four ideas and then listen to your ideas, your criticisms, uh, your, your ideas on these, as well as other ideas that you might have. Queremos repasar, pasar por estos cuatro ideas para escuchar sus uh, ideas, aportes, uh, críticas y también uh, sobre estos cuatro ideas. Estas cuatro ideas y también uh, sobre otras ideas que ustedes tienen que no aparecen entre, entre, entre los cuadros, los cuatro. So, as we move forward, thinking how in the landscape category, land use category, these four ideas have come up as ways that we can help both reduce our carbon emissions and improve our way of life in Amherst. En el proceso de pensar uh, en el uso del suelo, estos cuatro ideas son los que han salido como ideas que podrían ay ayudar para uh, atender al tema de cambio climático y también mejorar la calidad de vida de nosotros que vivimos en Amherst. So, let me emphasize number one and number three, which deal with solar panels and are addressing how would we like to see solar panels used within the town of Amherst. Va a destacar 
inicialmente, uh, los puntos 1 y 3, los cuales atienden al tema de los paneles solares y cómo podemos uh, mejorar las, uh, la ubicación e instalación de los paneles solares. So I suggest that we talk about those two issues and I'd love to hear from people what they think about where should we put solar panels, panels and how should we incentivize developers or homeowners or other people to locate solar panels and what are the best places for those? Sugiere que enfocamos, que enfoquemos en esos dos puntos, um, uno y tres, y pensar en cómo podríamos incentivizar a los stakeholders, los actores relevantes, para mejor aprovechar de las oportunidades para plantear paneles solares de una manera adecuada. Steve, I just want to jump in quickly um, because I think um, sort of the format that we had set up for this discussion was to first review the actions and then lead into a conversation. So I think it would be helpful to, to go over all of the actions first, if you don't mind. Lauren ha ofrecido un punto meta, una nota que la idea sobre de esta sección era primero revisar cuáles son los puntos que dicen las sugerencias y de allí volver a conversar sobre ellos. Okay, that's fine. The other two ideas, one, uh, number two on the screen, provide incentives for people to manage natural lands in ways that support carbon sequestration. Entre los dos que no hemos tocado todavía, el punto dos es uh, proporcionar incentivos para las personas que manejen las tierras naturales de manera que faciliten el secuestro de carbono. So, What this is asking is for people who manage our natural lands, these might be farmers, landowners, other people, to work their land in a way that causes carbon to be taken out of the air and stored in the soil where it cannot contribute to global warming. Lo que quiere decir eso es buscar maneras de hacer, de empujar, de facilitar que los que utilizan la tierra sean agricultores, sean propietarios, para manejar sus suelos, sus tierras, de una manera que este, fomente la, el secuestro, la secuestración. Sí, eso, eso quiere decir secuestración, el proceso en que a través de fotosíntesis, a través de manejar los suelos agrícolas, um, que el carbono, lo cual es un elemento que uh, pues forma una gran parte de toda la materia orgánica, todos los suelos, todas las plantas, todo eso, se mantiene y se uh, enriquece, que se enriquece. Okay. I, said, I said something in Spanish there that, I, that wasn't quite said in English, so I'll add that. Um, que se mantenga en el suelo. Que se mantenga en el suelo y que se, que se enriquece. So, to store, so basically, um, so the idea is to you know, uh, find ways to facilitate landowners and uh, property, whether they're farmers, land users, farmers, property managers, etc., to carry out practices that sequester more carbon. So carbon's an element that's really common in soils. Um, it's abundant in plants and organic matter. Uh, plants take it out of the air through photosynthesis and store it. Um, but sometimes it gets lost in, in soil. So the idea is to uh, find practices to store more of that carbon on the land um, to enrich carbon stocks and land. Great, thank you. Thank you, for Ashwin, for explaining that in more detail than I provided. Um, number four, we'll just go over that and then we can get into any of these in more detail. Number four is, as you can see, to increase access of outdoor recreational spaces for low-income rental and communities of color throughout the town. El cuarto tema, el cuarto punto, es en respuesta a la crisis, a las crisis sanitarias y climáticas actuales, aumentar el, ac el acceso a los espacios recreativos al aire libre para las comunidades de bajos ingresos 
de alquiler y comunidades de color. Great. Thank you both so much um, for providing those explanations. Um, Zikai, are you still with us? Awesome. Can, can I just I add, can I add one uh, one thing real quick to that? Of course. Uh, so so I just I just want to clarify that these four ideas um, to some degree came out of previous meetings. Um, and I think, Lauren, you mentioned that this is not in any particular order. And one of the things we want to know is what's most important to you from this list and also what's missing, potentially. So, otra vez, estos cuatro puntos salieron, cre creemos, de los antecedentes de las reuniones anteriores, um, pero no están en ningún order, o orden particular. Y en este sentido, quisiéramos saber cuáles de estas cuatro son más importantes, más prioritarias para ustedes. Y si es que hay algo que falta, que esta lista pues falta todavía, ¿no? Uh, okay, yeah. Awesome. That's a perfect setup. Thank you so much, Ashwin. I'm going to turn it over to Gazikaya. So uh, we're going to each take three minutes uh, to share on exactly what Ashwin just mentioned. Um, which one seems the most important to you? Um, is there one that is missing or several that you think are um, missing? And uh, what surprises you about this list or what makes sense to you about this list? Am I, should I still translate or Rosana, I don't know, Rosana, si quieres tomarlo. Puedo seguir, estoy fe, más que feliz para seguir si, te, si prefieres, no sé. Sí, tú lo haces muy bien. <risa> pues tú lo haces mejor. Yo estoy, pues, Yo estoy en, en una hora en que me olvido la segunda palabra. Eso me pasa a cada vez, a cada, a cada rato, entonces entiendo perfectamente. Pues pero lo que dice, lo que, lo que acaba de decir Gazikaya es que vamos a tomar tres minutos para pensar individualmente uh, sobre qué nos parece estos cuatro puntos. ¿Qué reflexiones tenemos sobre uh, el lenguaje que está presentado en la pantalla y lo que acabamos de explicar de una manera verbal? Um, si es que algo te parece, bueno, si, si es que te parece que algo falta de esta lista o uh, que hay algo que agregar. Eh, y de allí vamos a volver a compartir. And if you can just raise your hand. Um, if you'd like to go, we're each gonna go for three minutes and Lauren is going to be keeping the time and we'll give you a uh, gentle reminder when, you when your three minutes are up. Levántense la mano, por favor, para hablar. Y la idea es que cada uno tiene, va a tener, tener tres minutos para compartir. Y Lauren va a hacer eso cuando tienes un minuto o cuando está a tiempo. Cuando está a tiempo, when, when three minutes is up, but of course, we'll, there's okay. extra cuando, time for cuando, folks cuando to finish their thoughts. Lauren te avisa cuando se acaba el tiempo. Y bueno, con respeto, obviamente. Listo. Um, each of these points are very important. And I think they are very connected to uh, each other. Uh, estos Cuatro puntos son muy importantes y están conectados unos con otros. Eh, 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 me gustaría eh, hablar sobre la última, sobre la cuarta, que es eh, trabajando con las comunidades. Eh, pues es una de sus preocupaciones eh, que ellos tienen. Eh, I, eh, me, I, I was in English or in Spanish? En español. En los dos, pero si quieres puedes hablar en español y yo puedo traducirlo a inglés. Yeah, um, one, um, one of these are very important. And I was, um, I want to focus on the fourth uh, because um, it is one of the, the worries of the community. Um, Es, es uno de los puntos eh, que, que a las comunidades le preocupa más es eh, and is, um, how to increase these, these recreative spaces uh, outdoors um, for these communities. 
um, cómo, cómo es que se puede incrementar esta, es, es, estos eh, espacios recreativos al aire libre para las comunidades. Um, eh, I believe that Amherst doesn't have too many recreated uh, spaces for, for, for people. Um, we have, uh, there are some spaces, but uh, I don't know if there are other towns that have more or, uh, or not. Um, yo no sé si, eh, yo creo que en Amherst no hay suficientes espacios recreativos. No sé si en otros pueblos tienen más espacios recreativos que Amherst. Uh, pero, um, but it's very important to, to try to find a new spaces um, uh, uh, for, for these communities. So, how to do that? So, we need to study. Yeah, we go to the third point that conduct a town-wide study to determine the best local location for solar, well, solar panels or for uh, spaces uh, recreated spaces. Yes. Y esto nos lleva al tercer punto de que es estudiar lugares, no solamente para, para eh, eh, ubicaciones para los, los paneles solares, pero también para ubicar espacios eh, recreativos a, a, al aire libre para las comunidades. Mm -hmm. um, um, there are spaces that uh, the community uh, can use for Community gardens, for example, they don't have those spaces, and they they want uh, those spaces. Um, ya yeah, ellos muchas veces no tienen espacios para la, para los jardines comunitarios y ellos necesitan estos espacios y quieren estos espacios. Thank you so much, Asana. Thanks. So it sounds. Rosana, like one that is missing from here that's also very important is to um, address the need for community gardens that are uh, close to the, um, the communities that don't have access. Is that right? Yeah. Thanks so much. Caitlin, yeah. Thanks. Um, always happy to back up what Rosanna says. Um, and yeah, I, I, that's definitely on my mind too. Um, and I, I know I've mentioned this before, but I see one of the greatest challenges in Amherst being that a lot of low income folks and communities of color live in developments that are privately owned. I don't know who's translating, but I'm pausing. <laughs> For whoever is right now. Okay. Uh, es de, siempre dice que está siempre uh, feliz a dar respaldo, a darle respaldo a lo que dice Rosana. Y uno de los problemas principales es que muchos de las comunidades de color en Amherst viven en uh, este, uh, developments. Uh, de, 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 Desarrollar los jardines comunitarios. Claro, faltan jardines uh, comunitarios, pero también lo que dice Caitlin es que uh, viven en, uh, en propiedades privadas con este landlords, con propietarios dueños que son privados y eso es un problema. So I'm just looking at that number one and I sort of feel like there should maybe be some overlap between number one and number four, um, like thinking about providing incentives for developers to um, create those outdoor recreational spaces. Eso quiere decir, viendo un poco entre el punto uno y punto cuatro, que debería haber incentivos para que los propietarios creen uh, espacios comunales, ¿no? Y eso sería como un vínculo entre los dos. And I would even go so far as to say uh, mandates, but I know that might not be a popular opinion. Y también este, hasta más allá, decir que es obligatorio, que está, es un mandato que tienen que hacerlo. Uh, just to say in English, uh, I thank you for that comment. I think that's great. Um, you know, in, this, in this committee in the past, we've run into, and in, in other discussions, we've run into questions of whether or not it's okay and possible to mandate those kinds of things. Uh, one finding I think we've come up with is that indeed it is, but it takes political will. So appreciate that. Lo que digo acá de decir es que en este mismo comité hemos, en, en muchos momentos, uh, 
encontrar la cuestión si es que es posible hacer reglamentos, ordenanzas de esa manera que requieren que los propietarios, que los desarrollistas cumplan con requisitos así. Y la respuesta que sale la mayoría de las veces es que sí, pero requiere voluntad política. Mm -hmm. That's great. Just three minutes. <laughs> Marisa. Hi. So, I mean, I agree with what everyone has been saying so far. And like, also backing up Rosanna. Um, like, what I've seen, there also was a. Um, in the area that I live in that has a lot of people of color, they turned one area into a dog park rather than a regular park for kids. And mm -hmm. I think that that just says a lot. And I think that um, also as an add on, like a lot of you have already said, like for number four, also to do community gardens, which is also provide a, a nice space, which could potentially provide a nice space for recreation as well as play for children. And you can make it, you can combine all those things into one area. And there are a lot of areas that I've seen that where that could happen. Because um, I know that a lot of people, because I would provide access to food, it would, you could teach children how to grow their own food. Um, I know last time I talked about, you know, helping out with that in our communities. Um, but yeah, and I just think that brain recreation, outdoor, um, situation for kids and even adults and also people with disabilities in those areas who are trapped inside their houses because what I've seen too is that a lot of uh, people of color who are low income they don't have, they don't have the knowledge for the access to get help for the people in their families who are in their houses who have disabilities so I've seen apartment complexes and families that I know where they have someone with disability that's just literally inside the house the whole entire time. Like has nowhere to go, no way to get out, like nothing to do. And everyone's just kind of like at their wits end. So I think like providing like situations where people with disabilities can also come outside and enjoy, you know, that type of situation and learn something about outdoors and um, gardening and things like that would be very beneficial. All right, that was a lot. I'm going to try to translate that. Oh, sorry. I forgot to pause. It's okay. Uh, este, lo que acabo de decir es que, bueno, donde vive Marita, hay este, um, uh, un parque para los perros, pero no para la persona, para los niños. Y eso revela bastante sobre las prioridades que tienen. Um, y la otra cosa es que muchas veces la gente, las comunidades de color en Amherst, uh, no solamente faltan acceso directo en sus comunidades a jardines y también a espacios abiertos y libres de aire libre, pero tampoco no tienen conocimiento uh, y acceso como cultural, digamos. Eso no creo, creo que no dijo eso, pero algo así um, para acceder a los espacios que existen. Y también hay que enfocar en gente con discapacidades que no tienen las, misma, las mismas habilidades, porque hay una gran falta, estoy resumiendo, lo siento, pero hay una gran falta de acceso a estos espacios para gente con disabilidades, con discapacidades, y eso tiene que ser una prioridad. I summarized a little bit there. I apologize, but I, I hope I caught most of the main points. And to include, um, if you can, Ashwin, that um, concept of that there can be multiple uses for the space so that you could combine a garden with an area for children and um, make it accessible so that people who are, you know, stuck inside apartments all day can enjoy and be a part of the learning. Right. Okay. También mencionó que no es una cuestión de simplemente de solamente tener un jardín aquí y otra cosa aquí, sino se puede tener uh, zonas, áreas con múltiples usos. Y de esa manera, gente con discapacidades o gente con, por cualquier motivo no pueden fácilmente salir de sus casas, Igual pueden disfrutar los jardines, uh, tener acceso a comida local, a actividades uh, afuera. Y pues, si, si priorizamos áreas de múltiples, múltiples usos, podríamos servir y atender a estas, esta multitud de necesidades también. ¿Está bien? Ok. Thank you so much. And, um... Marita, I'm also thinking that I'm hearing in what you're sharing um, an aspect of like 
giving people more information about what they can access and how to access it, what is available and how to enjoy it. Is that yeah, okay? and I think that that's very important because I know that even for me, like when I first moved back here, I didn't realize a lot of the things that were around me to access. And I'm an able-bodied person and, you know, and I'm relatively young, you know what I mean? So I feel like it's good if, I know we like have like, uh, I know it's like in our neighborhoods in South Amherst, we have all the like information on access to food and stuff like that. But I think it's also good for people to know like, oh, about transportation. And I know a lot of people are already doing that, but it's just to make it more accessible and to make it more that we're actually like doing more outreach in that type of area. Look, Especially now that people, oh okay, yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> sorry. Lo que acaban de destacar es que, uh, sorry, I'm cooking right now. But lo que acaban de destacar es que um, no solamente es una cuestión de acceso a espacio de una manera literal, sino también uh, muchas veces les faltan conocimiento, el conocimiento sobre dónde ir, pues, ¿no? Y Marita, eso es lo que preguntó Gazikaya, y Marita contestó que sí, claro que sí. Y en su caso, pues, um, como una persona, uh, con habilidades que es móvil, um, uh, tampoco, no necesariamente siempre sabía dónde ir dónde, o cómo puedes acceder a, a los espacios. Um, y en, es, de, en este sentido, hay una gran necesidad de brindar información a estas comunidades. Si, es que, si hay algo de información sobre comida, sobre la alimentación, um, pero en cuanto a acceso a espacios verdes, Um, abiertas, uh, no hay casi nada de eso en estos, uh, estos sitios donde viven uh, las com muchas comunidades de color, mucha gente uh, de bajo ingreso. Thanks, Ashwin. I see that Bernard has his hand raised, and then we'll go to Romy next. Bernard, then on you. I'll try and be concise. I'm a farmer. So you won't be surprised to hear that number two would have a huge impact. Um, if I could make twice as much money growing potatoes the right way, that would have a huge impact on a lot of land. I'll pause. Okay. <clears throat> Soy agricultor, entonces el punto dos es el que me afectaría lo más entre, entre los cuatro. Y si yo pudiera ganar doble el, ingre, el ingreso por, por cultivar papas de la manera correcta, lo haría. That would be sort of a model just like solar panel incentives. Y eso podría ser un modelo, o sería un modelo exactamente igual a lo que tienen con los paneles solares. Point number four is something I could participate in as a large landowner. I imagine uh, English landscape style trails, and that would be facilitated by the incentives of money, signage, and liability coverage. Y el punto cuatro también podría participar como un propietario uh, de a gran escala con, con bastante tierra, bastante propiedad. Y eso sería incentivado por uh, este, caminos, uh, trochas, digamos, uh, uh, extensivos, uh, por uh, información y señales uh, buenos y por uh, cober cober cobertura de la liabilidad legal. Uh, regarding solar panels, I want to uh, stress that they not only solar electric photovoltaic panels, but that can also include, um, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, sort of um, photothermal, so the heating water panels and uh, battery storage, uh, because that what will help shape the peaks. Okay, en cuanto al sector solar, quiere destacar que debería no solamente incluir los paneles solares fotovoltaicos, sino también uh, uh, energía, de, energía solar concentrado termal, um, que 
uh, sería mucho mejor para manejar los picos del uh, pues peso al grid eléctrico. And finally, it, it occurs to me that the first three points uh, would be much easier to implement if we could find an appropriate third party certifying agency. Uh, analog yeah, yeah. I mean, so analogous to the organic standard, if we could have a carbon sequestration standard, a, a rooftop orientation standard, a location kind of standard that we could just incentivize an existing scientifically based system, we wouldn't have to reinvent it ourselves. Se ocurre que los primeros tres puntos se beneficiarían bastante de una certificación, un sistema de certificación de una manera, manera análoga a lo que uh, tenemos para comida orgánica. Por ejemplo, certificar paneles solares uh, citados en, un, uno, en los sitios adecuados según estos estándares y uh, uh, certificaciones para la secuestración de carbono también. Thank you. Thanks, Bernard. Uh, so we're going to go to Romy next, and then I see Andrew has his hand raised, which is great. Hi, so forgive me, I'm going to read off a piece of paper because I had to organize my thoughts. Um, so I agree with most people. I think number four is the most important to me. Um, but I also agree that, you know, using the, the, the language of just outdoor recreational space is not, I think, enough. Also having, you know, usable spaces um, so that, you know, gener generational wealth and the ability to like own land doesn't it isn't a barrier to people being able to actually connect with the land. Um, then I would go to number one, um, but I don't like a lot, I don't like a lot of the language. Oh my gosh, I have to stop. I'm sorry for translation. My apologies. You're good, thank you. Uh, you. You can actually continue. I'm just taking notes on what you say and I'll just do it all at the end. So this, this time I'll, I'll have it more precisely. <laughs> Thanks, Ashwin, sorry. Um, so incentives is a, it's a pretty like, mushy piece of language that doesn't really mean a lot and it provides a lot of different wins without any real consequences which I understand what you guys were talking about with you know using political power and ha only having so much um but if these are if this is kind of a goal we want to reach by what is it 2030 2035 like having real clear goals I think is going to be really important um mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to hear a clear goal and one that is not reliant on individuals. Um, so I think, personally, I think that the town should be doing work, more work to apply for grants to provide these kinds of resources, not just to developers, but to uh, many townhomes. You know, it, if you want to talk about providing resiliency, climate resiliency, not worrying about the tree falling three streets down in the middle of a winter storm, that's a really great way to go. Um, I would then go to number three, but again, with what I don't like about it is, is that it doesn't have a real position end goal. So like there's, there's like a generally understood goal after you conduct the study that you would then do something with the study. Um, but I mean, <laughs> The, the thought I had was that very much like the way Amherst is kind of stiltedly trying to respond to racial justice. Like, I think we're pretty done with conversations and investigations. And I think action is kind of where things need to go in, in Amherst. Um, and then I would put number two last. Um, and my, my big problem is with it is again, it puts a lot of the work on individuals and we're making this an individual's issue, not a community, you know, town issue. And I mean, especially with number two, I'd rather the focus move not from individuals to town, but individuals to maybe um, businesses is, is the way that one would go or to, um, higher income brackets because you know if you most of the town that I, homes I see in Amherst are you know you've got your garden in the back you've maybe got some woods lining it like that's all doing really good background work sequestering carbon you know I that's not adding a bunch of stuff whereas the golf courses 
the big, huge greens across the boulders, you know, that get maintained with fertilizer and big mowers, those are actively adding carbon. You know, I would rather us deal with those contributors who have been, you know, adding to the problem and not suffering a lot of consequences for it, as opposed to people who are suffering a lot of consequences for it, and then we're asking you to do more. That's it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Bueno, comenzó diciendo que uh, el punto four, el punto cuatro es lo más importante, uh, pero no debería enfocarse solamente en espacios recreativos y porque también tenemos que pensar en la meta, lo cual es asegurar que el estatus de ser dueño de tierra, dueño de una casa, um, no, sería, no sea una, una barrera para nada para usar la tierra. Y enfocar en la equidad, equidad es bastante clave para eso. Um, la palabra incentivos es una palabra, es un lenguaje medio suelto, medio flojo, uh, que no tiene mucho sentido, o no, no significa mucho, porque uh, este, crea o fomenta o plantea que hay mucho que ganar sin nada de consecuencias, mucha victoria sin ninguna consecuencia, porque evita hablar del uso de poder, um, como poder colectivo, creo yo. Y tener uh, uh, metas claras, súper claras, es muy importante si es que queremos lograrlos. Y si los goals, si, los, si, las, met si las metas uh, no dependen, y, y que las metas no uh, dependan en los individuos, solamente en los individuos. Que, tan, que en vez de depender en los individuos, individuales, um, el pueblo, la municipalidad debería estar aplicando para, pues, apoyo, para grants, uh, para apoyo uh, y brindar, y brinda, es, debería estar brindando estos recursos, no solamente a, a los negocios, a, a los propietarios y a individuales ricos, sino también pensando en negocios y otros, otros grupos. El punto tres, no tiene una meta final. Es implícito en el sentido de que si, bueno, vas a hacer un estudio, pues, uh, bueno, supo, su, su, se supondría que lo vas a utilizar de alguna manera después. Pero parece muy, muy parecido uh, a la manera en que Amherst está, pues, de una manera torpe, tratando una manera, pues, uh, uh, sí, pues, medio torpe, tratando de uh, atender, responder a las cuestiones de justicia racial. Estamos ya basta, ya terminado uh, de estudiar y conversar y la acción es donde toca ir. El punto dos es como último, uh, o debería ser como último, uh, pero lo que también hace es poner mucho peso en los individuales y no en la comunidad o en el pueblo o en la municipalidad. Debería ser como una, un asunto de la municipalidad. El enfoque no debería ser solamente en los individuales um, o la relación entre los individu individuales y la municipalidad, uh, sino, uh, por ejemplo, individuales y los negocios o a gente uh, que viene de los grupos de mayor ingreso. Y la mayoría de las casas de Amherst tienen este monte, tienen bosque en su, en su terreno, al fondo. Tienen... Uh, otros ecosistemas, otros sitios que están al fondo haciendo bastante trabajo uh, de secuestración, secuestrando carbono que, que ayuda. Mientras al mismo tiempo hay uh, concursos de golf, uh, otros sitios así que están activamente uh, empeorando el tema, causando daño con su maquinaria, con sus actividades. Y entonces deberíamos estar enfocándonos en los que están activamente causando daño y no en los que están, uh, pues, de cierta manera ayudando o por lo menos no están causando daño. Okay, I think I got most of that. That was beautiful. Thank you, Ashwin. And Romy, I was just wondering, um, was there something that wasn't on the list that you would like to see on the list? Um, la pregunta es que si hay algo que no estaba en la lista que debería 
estar en la lista? Um, I think that these are kind of good general ideas for some for some of the more uh, focused bullet points that we talked about in the in the previous meeting. I'm sorry if there's something you're thinking of that I'm not remembering correctly. No. Okay. Uh, entonces parece que, que pues pues no no que no hay not, no hay un punto ningún punto grande que toca agregar. Thanks, Ashwin. Um, and I want to just go to Andrew now, who has patiently been waiting. Thank you. Mute here. Yeah. I'm unmuting right now. So um, one of the things I want to, uh, so I'll, I'll follow what Romy did, and I'll, I'll, I guess I'll speak, and then I'll wait for Ash, Ashwin to do the translation. Does that seem like a good plan? Thumbs up? Yeah, that's okay. fine. I'll, I'll, I'll take notes on everything you say and just translate at the end. So, so go ahead. Thank you. Um, so it might be worth considering that items um, one and three, a lot of the actions that take place on the local uh, land use scale are going to be influenced by what happens with the SMART program, uh, the presence or absence of, of various incentives that are going to drive land use decisions. And so with, there's, with increased multipliers going towards um, resilient power systems for battery storage with increased multipliers going towards canopy and rooftop. I think what you're going to see is the, the regulatory market for solar in Massachusetts kind of pushing people farther away from um, forested and, uh, and natural pasture lands, uh, more so than local, local land use regulations might be able to. So that's one thing that's worth considering. Uh, something that might be worth considering too uh, in relationship to item number two is the question of like equity that I think Romy um, uh, very adequately expressed was well, when you're when you're talking about incentives and you're talking about uh, the question of ownership and who who traditionally owns large lands that would be eligible for incentives the one question that um, has been going around is what are the impacts of financially rewarding people who contain, who happen to have large tracts of land, right? Uh, whether it's a working land or just a golf course or something, you know? So there might be some way of kind of, of splitting that, uh, splitting that pie uh, a little bit more thoroughly. Um, and another thing to consider is that when you look at uh, land management around the globe, uh, oddly enough, the places that are managed in community forest, as a community forest or managed according to, you know, indigenous practices, those are the places where we are still seeing uh, biodiversity, all the things that we're trying to accomplish. And the question is, 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 it, is it the nature of the community landscape management model that provides that? And is that compatible with like, an, like a large scale uh, individual landowner? So that might be something that's worth considering. Um, it could be as simple as no-till farming. It could be as simple as having your local school system only acquire from a local no-till farmer, right? That would be a cool thing to do. Um, but, then, but then I think the other point that someone raised in relationship to providing access to those, those spots that are gonna be managed differently, that might be an important way of bridging the equity gap um, that otherwise would be created by kind of um, um, continuing to finance uh, large ownership, right? Um, and that thing too is like, when. One of the things that I think about when Amherst that is a really powerful uh, mechanism that is unique in the state is your soil preservation bylaw. And I think that's a, an interesting model that exists. And so you already have a tool that's used to manage a pre like a, a precious resource such as uh, agricultural fertile soils. And so it's interesting to think of like if there's an overlay on top of that that would help manage land according to like no-till farming practices or something like that. And I'm not a farmer, so I'm not, and I don't, I don't live here, so I'm not trying to get too involved. And, um, and Andrew, I'm gonna, sorry, I, sorry, we are, are going to have to move on, so I am going to um, just stop you there. But thank you That's so much. Fine. Those are really amazing ideas, and I hope that you will share more of those with Stephanie and with the rest of us as we move forward. No problem. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so here's the translation of that. Uh, debería ser, puede ser que vale la pena considerar que los asuntos uno y tres. Uh, en los dos que muchas acciones uh, uh, suceden a nivel uh, local, en, al, en, el, en los paisajes, paisajes locales, a la escala local, depende del programa SMART, 
y lo que pasa en, uh, a nivel local con los incentivos que van a empujar uh, y determinar las, de las decisiones sobre el uso de suelo. Los uh, multiplicadores aumentados van más hacia el almacén de las baterías uh, y a la canopía sobre los techos. Y el mercado regulatorio para uh, solar en Massachusetts va a empujar a la gente uh, uh, desde uh, los bosques, los sistemas uh, forestales y uh, pastizales, más que uh, los reglamentos locales podrían hacer. Eso quiere decir reglamentos estatales, creo. Um, I think you meant state incentives there. Uh, pero este, uh, también debería ser que vale la pena que la cuestión de equidad que mencionó Romy de una manera bien adecuada, cuando se habla de los incentivos y la cuestión de quién es el dueño y quién tradicionalmente es el dueño uh, de los predios más grandes y uh, que serían elegibles para estos programas, una pregunta que está circulando es cuáles son los impactos de, uh, pues, arreglar de una, de una manera finan financiera la gente que tiene estos predios grandes. Uh, y si uh, eso, quiere, eso se refiere a trabajar la tierra o a uh, un concurso de golf, golf o otra cosa, podría ser que hay otra manera de compartir el, el pie, ¿no? Compartir la torta, uh, de cortar la torta, digamos. Y cuando se, se ve el, la gestión de tierra, a, a nivel mundial, um, uh, de una manera sorprendente, los uh, sitios que son manejados como bosques comunitarios uh, o en, uh, en, uh, este, con, de una manera consistente con prácticas indígenas o en cuanto a prácticas indígenas, esos son los mismos sitios donde todavía vemos bastante biodiversidad. Y entre todas las cosas de que queremos uh, hacer, queremos lograr, uh, es... Una pregunta es si es realmente posible, si es consistente con la naturaleza de la, de la natura de tener uh, este, uh, gestión comunitaria de los paisajes que, que empuja esto, estos resultados, si eso realmente es compatible con uh, los propietarios y los predios individuales a gran escala. Si se puede lograr los beneficios que se ve con manejo comunal o indígena Uh, en un sistema que tiene muchos predios grandes con uh, dueños privados e individuales. Puede ser tan simple de hacer este, uh, agricultura sin uh, labranza, um, sin, pues, sin mucho uh, girar uh, el suelo um, o, tener, o hacer que tu escuela adquiere uh, la alimentación de un agricultor que utiliza estas técnicas de agricultura sin labranza. Pues en cuanto a la equidad y acceso, um, podría ser una manera de uh, hacer un puente entre los dos puntos, uno y cuatro, uh, haciendo o creando vías de acceso de algunas maneras para gente que no son los dueños de los predios. Una cosa que hace Anars, que es bastante único y poderoso, es la ley de preservación de los suelos. Es una ley interesante que ya, ya existente, y en este sentido ya existe una herramienta poderosa uh, que se utiliza para manejar un recurso bastante precioso uh, que podría también utilizar para manejar, que bueno, que se utiliza para manejar los suelos. Y allí pues terminó. Thanks, Ashwin. I think, um, Gizekaya, we're ready to move on to the next part of um, this discussion. Did you want to kick it off? So I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay, so the next piece that um, we are gonna give each person an opportunity to share on is um, reflecting on the three meetings that we've had so far um, and how uh, we've, we have heard from um, many participants that this has been a pretty different experience from other um, town planning processes. And so we wanted to give you the opportunity to share 
if you felt it was worthwhile, um, if you felt there was something that um, was really positive about it or something that didn't work um, and what could make it better for you. So the, we're going to do the three minutes again for each person and the main um, thoughts that we're interested in hearing from you is just what are your reflections on the experience of being a part of this um, task group and um, what, were, what were the positives and what were the negatives for you and um, what are some things that could make it better? En esta parte lo que vamos a hacer es pedir sus reflexiones sobre el proceso mismo en que estamos. Hemos escuchado que este proceso para muchos de ustedes ha sido uh, diferente que otros procesos de pues, gobernanza municipal. Um, entonces, uh, según uh, el proceso igual de ten, tomar tres minutos cada uno de reflexión, uh, queremos escuchar sobre uh, si el proceso para, para ti valió la pena uh, o no y pues cualquier otra re reflexión crítica que tienes. So feel free to raise your hand whenever folks are ready. Sí, entonces libre para levantar la mano para en, pues cuando estén listos, listas. Yeah, Romy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, question, is this working for you where we uh, do a longer talk and then you change it at the end? Okay. Um, so I have three main thoughts, uh, two good, just one uh, piece of negative feedback. Um, I think that, um, having all of the various translations in these videos is, it, it is not the way that these typical, these meetings typically have been, but I think that it is actually taking steps to be more, to, to reflect the community that we actually have, not the community that just normally shows up um, to, to like town meetings and can, you know, applies for these um, positions, which I think was something that I've, I've lived in Amherst on and off for 16 years. And that's, that's a huge complaint we've had and seeing actual work going into changing that is great. Um, when this is not a, these meetings specifically, but um, when we all received payment that it was in cash, that was as someone who's involved in state uh, programs, not having to deal with that kind of stuff. I know it seems really, um, it's probably not something most people think about, but not having to worry about filing various stuff with various state programs was incredibly helpful. Um, and was just a very thoughtful piece that happened in running these meetings. Um, and the only thing I would say that I wish had been different is that no meeting uh, time, like, when they were ended was not very often shared. So if it's like a very strange thing, you go into a meeting, you're not quite sure when it's gonna be done. Um, just a very small thing that would be helpful for planning. And that's all. Okay. Entonces, pues, tengo tres pensamientos principales, dos, uh, pues, buenos y uno, uh, un pedazo de aporte, un aporte uh, negativo para compartir. Uno, uh, tener todas bueno, las varias traducciones, interpretaciones en estos videos, en, estos, en estas reuniones, no ha sido como uh, se, uh, se lo ha hecho usualmente, pero parece que es, representa tomar pasos para reflejar la comunidad que realmente tenemos y no solamente quién 
asista, quien aparezca, quien aparece a estas reuniones y quien, quienes apliquen, quienes aplican para estas posiciones, etc. He vivido en Amherst por 16 años, uh, más o menos, y es una queja que muchas veces recibimos. Y uh, pues ver uh, trabajo real para atender a este asunto es increíble, es, es muy bueno. Uh, cuando hemos recibido pagos, uh, fue en efectivo y como alguien, como una persona a uh, quien estoy involucrado en programas estatales, no tener que uh, tocar uh, nada de eso, uh, no tener que preocuparme sobre uh, cómo hacer uh, el trabajo, cómo, cómo hacer todos los formularios uh, con los programas estatales fue súper útil, útil y ayudó un montón. Uh, tres, um, cuando uh, muchas veces uh, no fue compartido a la hora en que las reuniones iban a terminar y es un poco raro uh, entrar a una reunión y no estar muy seguro a uh, cuándo se va a terminar. Uh, entonces es una cosa pequeña, pero ayudaría uh, con la planificación. Thanks, Remy. That's really valuable. And just to say, we will be wrapping up at 8.30 tonight. Hope that's helpful. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Marita, yes. Hi. So, um, so, yes, I guess, you know, also similar to Rami. I've been living in Amherst on again, off again for the past 36 years. And, um, you know, it is one of the positive things I have to say is that it is very nice to see that there is something like this going on. Um, obviously, I wish that we could have met in person. Because <laughs> maybe, like, I feel like, um, like, I know, you know, a couple people here and there, but I feel like it would have been nice to connect in person to kind of, like, build things in our own communities. And, like, if people needed help with something to kind of make that connection. And I know maybe we can continue that after all this happens as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, overall, I feel like it was a very positive experience and I'm glad that uh, this was put together and that we could talk about these things. And also it, it gives me more confidence to talk to people in my, my neighborhood about these things. It kind of gives me more insight and more, um, how do I say it? Just more ideas of what to do in my own community. But yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> como Romy, he estado viviendo en Amherst como de vez en cuando, uh, para más que 30 años, 36 años creo, dijiste. Um, uh, es bueno saber que hay algo así que está pasando, que está sucediendo. sucediendo. Uh, obviamente, uh, ojalá pudiéramos uh, reunir Uh, cara a cara en persona uh, y pues conozco algunas personas aquí de, de algo pero hubiera sido muy bueno a uh, reunir en persona para construir una base para construir cosas en nuestras mismas comunidades para que si alguien necesitar necesitara ayuda con algo en su comunidad pues bueno así de esa manera hubiera sido uh, bueno eso hubiera ayudado Uh, pero generalmente ha sido una experiencia muy positiva y estoy agradecida que fue organizado. Uh, también me da más confianza para hablar con gente en mi barrio uh, sobre estos asuntos y me da más este, ideas y más impresiones uh, so, sobre qué se puede hacer en mi propia comunidad. Thanks, Ashwin. Who'd like to go next? Rosanna. Um, and this, uh, this, this were a very enriched process. Ha sido un proceso muy enriquecedor. Um, we have these four general main points. Eh, tenemos estos cuatro puntos generales. Um, 
now I will be interested to know uh, about the specific activities, um, how to address these points. Um, so ahora va a ser interesante conocer las actividades específicas a realizar eh, para direccionar estos puntos. Um, um, I think uh, this, this is a great start. Este es un, un gran empezar, un gran comienzo. Um, y espero que muchas personas más puedan estar envueltas en, en el futuro. And I hope um, more people could be involved in this, in this process also in the future. Thank you, Rosana. And yes, we, we hope so too. We will definitely um, be continuing the process of, of um, dialogue about these ideas and developing them into, into, a, into strategies, into actions that really work for the community. So thank you. También lo esperamos y vamos a estar siguiendo con uh, el trabajo y convirtiéndolos en uh, uh, ideas que se puede implementar. I forgot what you said there, but ideas that you can implement. <laughs>
everything we discussed was sort of processed and boiled down to these four goals. And then, you know, we were offered the opportunity to give feedback on the goals. Um, we could have done a lot more. I'm not sure how much, how necessary it was to do a lot more. Um, so I, I just kind of appreciate, you know, keeping it simple and straightforward sometimes. Este, pues todo han uh, tenido un desempeño bastante bien y seguro que agradezco, agradezco el ojo, ojo hacia, hacia la inclusión. Entiendo la frustración de seguir de una manera lenta, pues al mismo tiempo uh, he agradecido mucho que estas reuniones no se sienten demasiado ambiciosos, como que hemos tratado de empacar demasiado en un tiempo pequeño, tiempo corto. El hecho de que todo lo que hemos discutido fue procesado y distilado a estos cuatro metas, pues pudiéramos hecho uh, mucho más, pero no estoy seguro qué tan necesario era hacer mucho más. Entonces me, me gusta qué tan sen sencillo uh, fue el proceso. Thanks, Ashwin. Um, yeah, Gizikai, did you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to um, offer that we also consider that the products of these meetings are um, very multifaceted and perhaps not consistent with what um, kind of products have come out of typical meetings in Amherst in the past. But um, there is an extremely complex um, and challenging layer that has been a part of these meetings, which has been uh, one of the main goals of this work was to bring this product, if you have to look at it that way, you know, of um, acknowledging that there are many different types of people in our community with many different perspectives and that to value those perspectives we need to provide access in different ways and we need to be willing to structure meetings in different ways and and take a look at our values um, and and i yeah i just want to offer that we widen our perspective of productivity um, and allow uh, allow for the richness and complexity which was not simple or um, even slowly <laughs> accomplished uh, in these meetings um, that was actually very challenging and um, and layered and took um, incredible uh, courage for many of the people who participate in these meetings to be able to bring to this. Um, so I, I want to really honor all of that and make sure that that we don't um, yeah that we don't take away from how much um, courage and um, complexity and um, depth that we've experienced um, in these meetings together. Um, I'm going to translate and then I would like to share if I can. Um, uh, quiero ofrecer que consideremos que los productos de estas reuniones han sido múltiples no son consistentes con los tipos de productos que uno esté o que algunos de nosotros estemos acostumbrado en reuniones y procesos parecidos y también hay bueno ha habido una, una, un desafío bastante grande en hacer que sea un producto reconocer que hay tantas diferentes tipos tantos diferentes tipos de personas de gente en nuestra comunidad con tantas diferentes perspectivas Y para valorizar estas perspectivas, tenemos que brindar acceso en diferentes maneras y estructurar las reuniones de maneras distintas. Y 
volver a examinar, a, 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 a mirar a nuestros valores. Y además deberíamos uh, este, anchar, amplificar nuestra perspectiva sobre el concepto de la productividad y valorizar el, que el proceso uh, de muchas maneras, de esta manera, no era simple uh, ni uh, logrado lentamente. De hecho, fue bastante desafioso uh, y con muchas capas y capadas y realmente tomó coraje, uh, este uh, valor increíble para tanta gente y realmente quiero honorar y reconocer todo eso y asegurar que no sacamos uh, del cora coraje, that word in Portuguese, not in Spanish, y valor y complejidad y profundidad uh, que se requería todo esto. Um, I will, is, is, can, I, can I share as well? Is that all right? Cool. Um, so I just want to echo a lot of what has been said. Um, and I specifically want to thank, um, thank you all for your contributions today. I actually feel like a lot, again, it, it, I see, I get that it feels slow, but I actually think that, um, and I trust the Linnaean folks to, to incorporate this stuff. I think what came out even today was like super important. There were comments about elevating uh, access to public spaces for all people as part of our mitigation plan. I think that's critical because that's how we build a constituency to make these policies a reality. We don't get the town to pass bold, transformative structural changes uh, by having kind of technocratic means, meetings. We do it with people power. The plan that Linnaean is mostly going to put together isn't going to do that on its own. So I just can't stress enough how important this process is for building that kind of like people power in a way. So that, that's the first thing I'll say. Second of all, um, just thank you all for your time. And also thank you, Gazit Kaya, for all your work uh, in making this part of the work successful and making it possible. Um, it really, we, we couldn't have done this without you. Um, so I just want to, you know, lift you up there and, and thank you for, for everything you've done on this, really. Um, and finally, I just want to also point out that um, I too have been in a lot of uh, fast paced technical meetings, uh, including ones that fed into climate action plans even for municipalities. And while the meetings kind of feel more productive because you're covering a lot more technical ground, the product ain't that much better. <laughs> it ain't better at all, in fact. Um, so I, th I think that what seems like product productivity in meetings, uh, if you actually look at the results, um, at least gives me pause to kind of reconsider that. Um, so that, that's just another thing that I wanted to put on the table is that, um, you know, my, my entire career and upbringing taught me to think that a certain type of conversation is productive. Um, and when I sort of step back to examine political progress, I find that those kinds of meetings, abundant as they are, don't always lead to real change. So I think it's great that we're trying something else. Um, bueno, que, primero quería um, uh, agradecerles a todos para las contribuciones de hoy día. Creo que se, son súper sustantivos y útiles, uh, especialmente pues recordarnos que tener um, acceso y elevar la prioridad de De, de, poner, de brindar acceso a espacios verdes, abiertos, jardines, etcétera, es súper importante porque lo que hace el INEAN en uh, el plan no va a ser el cambio mismo, en sí mismo. Tenemos también que construir el poder del, del pueblo y involucrar más gente en la coalición para el cambio porque es tan profundo y tan estructural que tenemos que tener más gente que pueden acceder a estos procesos y, estar, y ser parte de um, de la gobernanza de una manera real. Uh, segundo, quería agradecerle a, a Gazit Kaya para su trabajo uh, tan, tan uh, profundo, tan duro, uh, para asegurar que esta, este enfoque de, de inclusión realmente fuera posible. Uh, no hubiéramos podido hacer nada de eso sin, sin uh, tu uh, ayuda, sin tu compromiso. Y entonces, pues realmente muchas gracias. Y finalmente quería decir que uh, en mi experiencia propia trabajando en reuniones, uh, incluso los que están vinculados a planes de cambio de acción climático, aunque pase reuniones más técnicas que pasan a una velocidad pues mayor, uh, muchas veces el producto que sale de esos procesos no son mucho más detallados realmente. Y cuando veas lo que sale de todo esto, um, pues yo también fue crecido um, o pues... Uh, 
creado para uh, pensar en la productividad de cierta manera. Um, pero cuando tomo un, pa un, un paso por atrás y veo un poco los resultados y la tasa, el, la tasa de cambio que hemos visto en el mundo, um, uh, pues no ha, no ha servido. Entonces creo que es ya adecuado que estamos uh, tratando algo diferente y tomando otra teoría de cambio. Entonces, muchísimas gracias. Thank you. And um, uh, yeah, just really appreciate also um, want to thank everybody, as Ashwin said. Um, I know that we all came here with a lot of different perspectives, um, different needs and different um, different pieces of ourselves that we were able to bring or not able to bring because of the way that the meetings were structured. And I just, um, I want to appreciate everybody for finishing with us. Um, but it's not really the end because um, like Ashwin said, um, these things won't really happen unless the community uh, believes in them and wants them. And um, we barely scratched the surface in these three meetings and with the people who are present in these meetings um, on, on finding out what the community actually needs. So this is really just the beginning. And, um, and I, I really, my, you know, one of our, my personal hopes, and I think um, the hope of Linnean and Stephanie is that we will continue to hold them and the committee accountable to representing um, what we've uh, begun to talk about in these meetings and accountable to what um, the community actually needs and wants um, in, in an authentic way. Um, and I appreciate what Marita said about how this has given um, some of us tools to be able to talk with our neighbors and friends. And I think um, that is a piece that will be very valuable as we continue because um, the more we know uh, about what's going on in the town, the more we'll feel able to um, ask for what we need and what we want and to actually hold our government accountable. So there will be a variety of ways uh, that you can stay in touch. Um, and there will be opportunities in the next year to continue being a part of this. Um, and uh, Lauren is going to very quickly um, just give an overview of those after Ashwin uh, translates what I said. Thank you so much. But, uh, well, yeah, for sure. Um, para, para terminar, uh, este, esto es un inicio de un proceso, un inicio de una conversación, porque como, como dijo, uh, Dijo a yo, dijo a Shun, este, uh, um, lo que hace, lo que, lo que sale del plan no va a pasar sin uh, mucha participación, más que, sin, sin, sin que el pueblo lo, lo demande, lo insiste uh, frente al gobierno. Entonces nosotros como comunidad vamos a, a hacerles responsables a, a Linnean, a, a, al gobierno, a Stephanie, a, al comité, um, para asegurar que realmente... Uh, mantengan lo que, todo lo que hemos conversado en estas reuniones y asegurar que estamos parte del proceso. Hay varias maneras de seguir participando en el proceso. Um, uh, lost my train of thought. What, what are the ways that you mentioned to continue to participate in the process? And Lauren's going to go over those. Well, okay, y Lauren uh, ahora, ahora está, va, va uh, a explicarnos. Thank you, Vivica, and, and thank you, everyone. Um, just to reiterate, it's, it's been an honor to spend time with this group and in this space together and thank you for giving your time to this process um, because it's made it so much richer. Um, so as we were saying earlier, um, after this process of task group meetings wraps up, we're going to be developing these ideas into lists of actions and strategies and we want to make sure that the ways that those get reflected uh, the, the ways that those get put together really reflect the values and the priorities that we've discussed here. So um, we're going to be wanting to circle back with you all and 
um, talk about those ideas and make sure that they are aligned with the discussions that we've been having throughout this process. Um, so we want to connect back with all of the community leaders, your friends and families that hopefully you've been talking to um, about how we can make those strategies work the best for the community. Um, and then so the hope is that this dialogue is really going to be ongoing, even though we won't be in this shared virtual space. Um, and that um, everyone will continue to be engaged with the plan. Um, we'll be drafting those strategies over the next few months and the draft plan will be presented to the town um, in the spring. And that will be another opportunity for the community to come together and provide feedback on the draft plan and um, and and tell the, the committee in the town um, how they feel about that. So um, so keep an eye out for more communications from us. And um, yeah, just thank you so much for your participation. And don't hesitate to reach out if you have more thoughts, more ideas, things that you didn't feel comfortable sharing in the meetings, um, but want to make sure get recorded. Um, anything at all that comes up, please know that we are here and we want to hear from you. Before you go, I just wanted to, I'm sorry, I've been quiet, oh, but- Sorry, I, Stephanie, we're go just going to do the translation first. Go ahead. Bueno, ha sido un honor uh, pasar tiempo con este grupo y ha uh, enriquecido tanto el proceso. Um, como estamos diciendo, después de este, los, las reuniones de, de este grupo, vamos a estar desarrollando estas ideas uh, en una lista de acciones y estrategias. Um, y para asegurar que lo que escribimos refleja los valores y ideas, e ideas que hemos conversado aquí, vamos a devolverlos a ustedes para que ustedes puedan asegurar que, uh, bueno, para asegurar que estamos conectando con los líderes comunitarios, uh, con sus amigos y familias uh, sobre cómo podemos uh, asegurar que estas estrategias funcionan lo mejor para la comunidad. El diálogo va a ser uh, continuo, aunque no estaremos aquí en este espacio virtual compartido. Uh, estaremos elaborando estrategias en los uh, próximos meses y el plan borrador se va a presentar a la municipalidad en la primavera. Y eso va a ser otra oportunidad para juntarnos y uh, proporcionar aportes uh, sobre el plan borrador y para decirle al comité y a la municipalidad cómo se siente sobre eso. Por favor, déjanos saber cualquier cosa que sale para ustedes. Thanks, Rosalind. Stephanie, did, and I saw Rosana's hand as well, I think. Um, Stephanie, go ahead. I just wanted to um, also thank everybody for trusting this process. Um, and again, acknowledge that um, I, you know, understanding that it was hard for people at times and, um, you know, echoing a lot of what Gazi Haya said. And I just want to thank you um, so much for sticking with it. And my personal hope is that this opportunity to get to know some of this material. And as Marita stated, having some more confidence about, about it will encourage you um, to get more involved as well. And, and in some, some of these committees and opportunities that happen within town to hopefully be able to engage at that level as well. Um, and also just to say that I, you know, I'm always accessible um it, in the town and i'm always open and willing and eager to listen and hear from folks so um even after this whole process is over after the plan is developed hopefully i'll still be here and um welcome anyone to reach out to me at any time muchas gracias a todos para confiar en el proceso. Uh, quería reconocer uh, que era difícil para algunas personas en algunos momentos y quería también uh, uh, repetir mucho que, o um, este, resonar mucho lo que dijo Gazi Kaya. Mm. Uh, 
Y pues gracias, muchas gracias a todos para seguir con el proceso. Y mi esperanza personal es que esta oportunidad para saber mejor, conocer mejor este material y tener, uh, les, les van a hacer tener más confianza sobre, uh, sobre, sobre ello y que les motivan para involucrarse hasta más. Uh, algunos de estas comités y oportunidades uh, que pasan en la municipalidad um, también ojalá estarán en su radar y que uh, ustedes podrían uh, participar en esos también, en, en otras uh, comités y oportunidades. Uh, yo siempre estoy accesible y siempre con muchas ganas y voluntad para escuchar a la gente, a ustedes. Entonces, incluso después de que termine, termine todo este proceso, uh, ojalá todavía voy a estar aquí y cualquier persona está más que bienvenido para uh, darme el alcance para conversar en cualquier momento. Y la última palabra a Rafana. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um... Yeah, I wanted to say thank you very much for uh, for these sessions. Um, this is not only about building community, it's not only about inclusion, it's also about shifting power, it's also community participations, giving voices to the community. This is, um, this is a great session because um, um we could you could um do this only with the professionals or the technicians but at the end something is missing uh, some, something could be missing and and um and you are aware about that and uh, to uh, and this a given giving a space to uh, to more participants to people that that have other needs different cultural cultural approaches uh, that many different uh, point of view or needs is very um, important uh, to to be here and thank you very much for for this um, is no es solamente eh, construir comunidad o, o inclusión o esto también es eh, cambio de poder es participación comunitaria es eh, eh, estas reuniones podrían hacerse solo con profesionales o con los técnicos pero siempre al final va a haber algo que falta y, y esto eh, pues ha sido muy importante que abran este espacio para para la comunidad, para que la comunidad también pueda a, a hablar sobre sus necesidades y sobre sus diferentes, diferentes um, eh, eh, formas culturales eh, que, cada, que cada uno tiene y, y, y que pueda eh, elevar su voz y decir cuáles son sus necesidades. Es, es muy, muy importante eh, que se haya podido hacer esto ahora. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We'll let you go. I know we've run a bit over and take good care, each of you. And um, you'll probably hear from us um, with a, some sort of a completing email. Thank you each. And many thanks to Ashwin. Oh, yeah. Gracias a todos. Cuídense mucho. Ciao. Good job, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.